Kiaru wakes up having nightmares. He's been having the same dreams for a while and the voice in his head says he needs to get stronger. Anna comes in and wipes the sweat of Kiaru which he says doesn't. I will do it on my own. Kiaru says that if he is a hero, he will pay back for everything that Anna did to raise him. Kiaru goes into the forest to pick some apples when the voices in his head tell him to obtain a sight of the spirits. Kiaru lightheadedly walks nearby a lake and summons the star spirit which star spirit grants any of the Kiaru wishes in return for his ancestors' deeds. Kiaru asks for the sight of the spirit, now Kiaru can see stats of everything from the fairy to an object. He suddenly remembers that he was in a fight against the demon lord with other heroes where the rest of the heroes were defeated, and the only one standing last was himself. He refused to heal the heroes and started using his healing ability in an offensive way to fight the demon lord. Kiaru defeats the demon lord and gets the philosopher's stone. Flare one of the heroes heals herself with the hidden elixir she had and congratulates Kiaru for defeating the demon lord and tells him that the stone is evil and should be returned to the king right away. To which Kiaru replies he knows that the stone is called the philosopher's stone and he will use it to cure the world by going back in time and start his journey from the very early stages of when he became the hero. Back to the present he gets the symbol of the hero printed on his hand and with the help of the sight of spirit powers he determines that he is a healer once again. He goes into the forest to eat toxic shrubs and mushrooms to get used to toxins and build resistance against them. Soon after the hero Flare comes to his village in search of the new hero and takes him to the royal palace. Upon reaching the palace and greeting the king they check the class of Kiaru which determines to be a healer. King is pleased and says that this is what they were looking for while Flare seems to be disappointed in him to be a healer. While Kiaru is resting the maid pulls up to his room and starts seducing Kiaru to sleep together. Sleeping with heroes can boost their potential and power so Kiaru used his healing ability to gather all the experiences while they were having intercourse. Kiaru kept having intercourse with maids on a rotating basis. Kiaru was asked to heal the great swordsman who was injured. Kiaru meets Kiraha the great swordsman who has lost her arm. Kiaru uses his ability which regenerates her arm and Kiaru falls on the floor with a lot of pain. Flair sees him faints and is disappointed in him but her attendant is shocked by the healing abilities he possesses and asks Flair if he can do experiments on him. Flair agrees with him and gives him the idea to put Kiaru into drug addiction so that he won't escape them. While Kiaru faints, he is just acting like he fainted while listening to that Flair was saying about him and is glad that Flair hasn't changed and he can finally get his revenge on her. Kiaru wakes up and is scared to experience the feelings and pain of Kiraha when she lost her arm. He is throwing a pillow and everything he can find near him at the Flair's attendant. He says he will lose his mind and everything if he keeps continuing to use his power to which Flair's tell him that what he did is a good thing and his ability will save a lot more people and asks Kiaru if he will heal the rest of the heroes even if it means to get hurt a little bit. To which Kiaru shook her hand off and nods and tells her that he still can't do it. Flair and her attendant leave his room. This was all an act that Kiaru did from the memories he had he knew what was coming for him next. Flair used to sleep gas and tea and asked her maids to serve it to Kiaru and he fell asleep and ended up waking up in a cell tied to a chair. He was abused and forced to be intimidated by strangers men and women so they can boost their power and potential by having intercourse with the hero. By then Kiaru got addicted to the drugs that were used on him and he couldn't stay sane whenever someone enters his cell. Flair came to his cell to which Kiaru begged her for the drugs and Flair asked him to act as a dog and bark for her. But at that moment he got resistance from drugs that were used on him and got his senses back. He started planning his extermination and he executed it when the king and his most mighty soldiers went to another country. He broke free his collar and escaped from the prison. He gets captured by the knight and is presented in front of the Flair. The knight says he said something unique which can't be shared in front of everyone and he needs a few moments with Flair. Flair, her guard, goes to another room and attacks the Flair's guards and chokes Flair exposing that he is Kiaru and changing his facial structure by his healing ability, and the Kiaru they saw was the knight. Kiaru's sweet revenge starts, he breaks two fingers of Flair's to which she yells a lot and no one comes to help her. Kiaru says if she stays silent for all ten fingers, once he breaks them all he will leave her alone, and that he will be satisfied. Flair withstands the pain from breaking her fingers till her last one remains where Kiaru uses his healing ability on her fingers to which she loses her insanity and says it's not fair Kiaru breaks her finger and she loses the bet. Kiaru undresses her and forces himself on her. He used his healing ability to paralyze her legs and she tries to crawl away Kiaru gets naked and asks Flair which rod she prefers his rod or the hot iron rod and forces himself over Flair. Afterward, he changes Flair's face and erased her memories and pinned the death of Flair on the night, 
and escapes the kingdom with Flair. Flair wakes up not knowing who she is or he is too and Kiaru hugs her and tries to manipulate her into believing that she is his attendant. Kiaru departs for the journey by which he took Flair's jewelry and important things. While leaving with Flair he noticed that the crowd was gathered near the bulletin board where people were mourning Flair's death and everyone was talking about how Norn should come back as soon as possible. Kiaru and Flair's get instinctively scared when they hear the name Norn. Kiaru doesn't want to face Norn at this time because, the previous time, she was the only one who noticed he was not addicted and was acting. Kiaru dreams about his past where he and the other three heroes are on a journey where he is abused by them. He dreams about when he was abused by Flair in the tent when she poured the drug on her thighs and legs and had him lick through it when she saw Kiaru's rod she got mad and punched and kicked his rod and he suffered horrendously. To which the other hero Blade who's in love with Flair sees what they were doing in their tent and gets mad and beats Kiaru very badly to where he is on the ground. She then realizes that he used his tongue on Flair and if she sticks her tongue with his she can be one with Flair and continues to do so while jerking Kiaru. Kiaru tired and beat up and on the brink of death returns to his tent where the hero Bullet is waiting for him. Bullet decorated Kiaru's tent with rose petals and hugs Kiaru from behind which Kiaru is afraid of Bullet and Bullet gets mad and beat Kiaru and has sexual intercourse with him, leaving him unconscious in his tent and telling him that he will love him tomorrow in return for the abuse he did today in the tent. Kiaru wakes up from his horrendous dream with Flair right beside him naked and does sexual intercourse with her. Soon after they reach the town of Lanarida which is a free city located in the eastern capital where he sees everyone is sick. He and Flair go into a hotel and have food where Kiaru notices with his right eye power that the water was contaminated and is the reason for the sickness that everyone is suffering from. They return to their lounge and make medicine for the disease that's been spreading all over the town. While traveling they came across a merchant who is also suffering from this disease. The merchant asks his attendant to drink it and his attendant gets cured instantly, and he then tries it on himself. He gets cured and asks to buy the whole recipe to which Kiaru declines and says it's a family recipe that he can't share. But what he can share is the extra medicines he has in return for half the profit that the merchant makes and in case the merchant doesn't do so, he will approach another merchant, the merchant agrees to deal. While returning to their lounge Kiaru says he wants to buy something and they end up going to a slave shop where he tells the seller he wants a combat slave while he looks around nothing catches his eye so the seller takes him to another part. He stumbles upon the ice wolf girl who is also suffering from the same water disease, but the problem with her is she can't be tamed and have no potential to grow. But Kiaru seeing her anger and the hunger for revenge takes her in and promises her to get her revenge and buys her. Sitsuna is in bed taking rest meanwhile Flair is worried about why Kiaru removed her collar and what if she attacked them. Kiaru replies that he doesn't need a collar to control her. Kiaru heals Sitsuna and sees her traumatic experiences and past where she reached her power potential and can never get stronger and how humans hunted her and her friends down and sold them as slaves. Kiaru realizes the ones who did that were Jioral's army same army of the kingdom he fled from making him want to take revenge on them too. He sips the medicines and kisses Setsuna and delivers the antidote to her. She wakes up and punches Kiaru and tells him what he is doing with her and gets angry. Flair comes in the middle and explains how she can do such a thing to him where he took her in, got her new clothes and most importantly healed her. Setsuna realizes her mistake and tells sorry to Kiaru. Kiaru asks Flair to go down and fetch some medicines leaving them both alone in the room. Flair leaves. Setsuna removes her claws and says sorry but she needs to leave and save her village and attacks Kiaru when he is not looking but to her surprise. Kiaru pins her down and tells her that he doesn't need a collar to tame her because she is so weak that she can't do anything in front of an alchemist. Defeating those soldiers is a different thing. Setsuna starts getting emotional because she is useless and can't do anything but Kiaru explains he can help her with growing her potential and reveals the hero mark that he has on his hand only if she will reveal her true name to him. When a human knows a demi-human true name, they can control them with their will. Setsuna agrees and they both have intercourse with each other resulting in boosting Setsuna's potential quickly. Setsuna, Kiaru, and Flair reach the nearby hill of the Ice Wolf clan where the clan members are getting beaten. Setsuna is about to rush on them but Kiaru holds her down and tells her that they are doing that to attract the other ice wolf warriors. He tells Setsuna that he will go down and clear them and she should wait and when signaled should attack the Jioral soldiers. Kiaru wears a mask and declares that he's the sword hero blade and he will save the ice world warriors and starts killing Jioral soldiers one by one and then when the number gets less, he signals Setsuna to attack resulting in the Ice Wolf Clan's victory. Setsuna promises Kiaru to reveal her true name and have intercourse again with him. 
while having intercourse Kiaru thinks Setsuna might be more mentally disturbed than he is. Hiraha hears about the army that got wiped out in the LAN arena and that the soldiers fled because they were attacked by the sword hero who used the sword hero move to kill them all. Kiaru, Setsuna and Flair are having their best time in a nearby lake. Setsuna is catching fish and Flair is setting up the camp. Kiaru thinks the way Setsuna is catching fish is similar to a bear. Kiaru wants to have fun himself now so he gets intimate with Setsuna asking Flair to later join them and then he gets intimate with Flair asking Setsuna to join them later. They are traveling through a narrow valley where they see people who are sick and poor by the roadside a strange looking man asks Kiaru if the girl he is traveling with is a snow wolf and if would he sell her to him for a gold coin. Kiaru declines and says she's worth 1000 gold coins the man gets angry and attacks Kiaru. Setsuna comes in between and holds his hand behind his back and Kiaru uses his healing ability to read his memories and gets to know he is one of the deserting soldiers who attacks the Snow Wolf village and ends up getting killed by Setsuna. Kiaru and the girls meet the merchant who sold the medicine for the disease and now the merchant is trying to threaten them to sell the recipe for a fixed price with manpower or they won't leave unscratched. Kiaru stands up and tells him he is not scared of him and will fight everyone to which the merchant replies he won't be able to protect those two girls behind him and laughs. Kiaru replies that those are the tools he doesn't care if they die. He will do whatever it takes to kill all of them but he calls himself down and sells the recipe anyway to the merchant. While coming back Setsuna and Flair feel sorry and asks for forgiveness to which he replies no worry because they can't create the medicine without his power. He suddenly gets attacked by Kiraha but he deflects it and asks why he got attacked to which Kiraha replies he is the evil who killed the innocent soldier near the Ice Wolf clan to which Setsuna interrupts and says that Kiaru is the one who saved them and protected them from the soldiers attacking them. Kiraha is convinced that Kiaru has brainwashed them she quickly knocks out Flair to which Kiaru gets angry and yells how dare you hurt my property asks Setsuna to protect her and fights Kiraha in a deadly fight. They are on equal footing meanwhile. During the fight, Kiaru shows the pain of the Ice Wolf clan to Kiraha, and she faints. Kiraha is taken to their lodging and Kiaru asks Flair to act as the princess. Kiraha wakes up with her hand tied and Kiaru tries to explain to her what she saw was the truth. He changes his face to his original face showing that he is a healer hero who fled the nation making Kiraha more enraged saying that he killed Flair. Flair comes into the room and tells her that they both escaped and have to fake their death so they can leave the corrupt country in the name of saving the world. Kiraha believes them and wants to show her gratitude to Kiaru so they end up doing intercourse with each other. Kiaru, Setsuna, Flair and Kiraha are having breakfast in the morning while Kiraha is holding Kiaru real tight and Setsuna and Flair are jealous. While Kiraha is going to feed Kiaru an announcement goes off in the whole town for the hero of recovery that he should surrender peacefully or the people from his village that are brought there will be executed one by one. He asks Kiraha to get him information and kisses her to give the final touch. Kiraha rushes and gets the information that mentions that the village was attacked for having a heretical hero, and the village for having heretical beliefs. Kiaru tells them that he is angry and he needs to go somewhere. He changes his face to one of the soldiers that Setsuna killed in the valley and slides one of the acting soldiers and tells him what happened and how he wants some help from him. The soldier agrees and Kiaru tells him to deliver the letter to Captain Renard. Meanwhile, he asks what they did in the village of the Hero of Recovery to which he replied they killed a lot of people and that he enjoyed the whole thing while they also forced intercourse with the woman who raised the Hero of Recovery in front of the whole village. Kiaru controls his rage and lets the soldier deliver his letter. Captain Renard comes to meet the soldier who fled from the battle and has information on the hero of recovery but the ex-soldier begs Captain Renard to bring him back to the soldiers he agrees and then Captain Renard asks where is the hero to which the ex-soldier says front of you. Captain Renard gets confused and the ex-soldier face changes to Kiaru and he mocks Captain Renard till then all the backup soldiers and Captain Renard fall on the ground because the neurotoxic which he was burning affects the soldier and Captain Renard. Kiaru uses his healing power to go through his memories and found out what they did in his village which makes him enraged and he changes Captain Renard's body to one of the hero blades. Captain Renard wakes up with a mirror in front of him to see himself as a blade and then he boasts about how he forced her on Anna the woman who raised the hero of recovery to which Kiaru replies you can do cruel things to others because you don't understand other people's pain and suddenly few big orcs comes behind and forces them on Captain Renard. Kiaru finds out about Anna's body and couldn't heal her because she was dead. He returns to his lodging while being very sad and has harsh intercourse with Setsuna and Flair. 
The next morning Kira comes with more information that the people from his village will be killed in the Colosseum and that Norn is back in the kingdom and she is part of it who came up with the idea. Kiaru doesn't want to fight Norn because he is afraid from the past when she found out about him not being drugged anymore and that he was back to his senses. He says the only one who can truly stop him will be Norn. As the executioners begin slaughtering innocent villagers, Kira's rage boils over, he unleashes a brutal assault on them, relentlessly cutting them down one by one. He refuses to stop, even as they plead for mercy, consumed by his desire for revenge. Desperate to stop him, the executioners activate a powerful magical barrier to drain Kiara's strength. However, Freya with her mastery of magic reverses the effect, empowering Kiara instead. With renewed strength, Kiara continues his merciless rampage, cutting through the executioners like a hot knife through butter. The once invincible warriors now crumble before him. Their bodies were unable to withstand his wrath. As Kiara stands amidst the fallen executioners, his eyes catch sight of the dying villagers lying on the ground. He rushes to their side, hoping to save as many lives as possible. However, his hopes are quickly dashed when he learns that they have been fed poison. Freya steps forward from the shadows. Her face is disguised as flares using her shapeshifting ability. She addresses the audience, revealing the dark secrets of the Jioral's kingdom and the true nature of the executioners. In the end, Kiarga is only able to save one boy, who he carries away from the carnage to safety. He cradles the boy in his arms, watching as the life slowly fades from the other villagers. With the chaos finally subsiding, Kiarga notices the boy he had saved earlier staring at him with a look of anger and resentment. He understands that the boy blames him for everything that had happened to the village. Despite the weight of his guilt, Tiarga knows that he cannot stay in the village. He turns to the merchant who had helped him earlier and asks him to take care of the boy. As Kiarga prepares to leave the village, he receives a visit from Kiraha, who had been spying on the kingdom. She informs him that Norn and her army are headed for the city of Branica, and warns him of the danger that lies ahead. Kiarga decides to head to Branica as well. He knows that the Demon Lord will be present and he wants to meet her again. He is eager to learn more about the Demon Lord's plans and to see how his past experiences can help him in the upcoming battle. As Kiarga and his companions make their way toward Branica, they stop to make camp for the night. Despite the tension and danger that surrounds them, Kiarga finds himself enjoying the company of Freya and Setsuna. Freya suddenly declares that she will kill anyone who stands in Kiara's way. Her words cause Kiarga to pause and reflect, realizing that, aside from her unwavering devotion to him, Freya's personality is not that different from Flair's. Freya's power is immense, so much so that it eventually causes her magic staves to break. Kiarga realizes that her power will only continue to grow, and so he decides that they will need to acquire divine weapons that can withstand her incredible strength in the future. After traveling for many weeks, the party finally reaches Branica, a bustling city known for its harmonious coexistence between humans and other races. Unlike many of the other places they have visited, where tensions run high and conflicts are common, Branica is a shining example of peaceful cohabitation. As the party enjoys their meal at a local restaurant, they are suddenly interrupted by the appearance of a familiar face. Tiarga recognizes her immediately. It is Ivris, the powerful demon lord he had defeated in his previous life. Tiarga feels a mix of surprise and apprehension at the sight of Eve, wondering what she could want from him. He had defeated her years ago and he thought that was the end of it. Eve, on the other hand, seems to be in a cheerful mood and greets Kiarga with a friendly smile. She sits down at the party's table and strikes up a conversation, reminiscing about their past battles and commenting on how much Kiarga has changed since their last encounter. She tells him that she has moved on from her past as a demon lord and has started a new life as a merchant, traveling from place to place and selling her wares. As Kiarga talks to Eve, he suddenly notices something strange about her appearance. Her hair which was once a shimmering silver, is now a dark shade of black. Kiarga realizes that this means Eve has not yet ascended to the rank of Demon Lord and is therefore less powerful than she was before. He wonders if this is the reason why she seems so friendly towards him now, as she may not see him as a threat anymore. During their encounter with Eve Reese, bounty hunters attack her and she is hit by a paralyzing arrow. However, Kiara's party intervenes and rescues her, bringing her to safety and providing the necessary medical attention to heal her. Kiarga learns that Eve Reese is a member of the Black Wing tribe, the group that the current demon lord has ordered to be eradicated. While hiding out with Eve, Kiarga reveals to her that he had encountered her in the future, where she had already become the demon lord. He offers to protect her until she fulfills her destiny and ascends to the rank of demon lord. 
Although Eve initially has doubts about Kiera's claims, she agrees to stay with the group and accompany them on their journey. Later that night, Eve is shocked and embarrassed to wake up and find Kiarga engaging in inappropriate behavior with Freya and Setsuna right in front of her. Kiarga invites Eve to join in with their activities and teases her, urging her to prove that she is a mature adult. When Kiarga offers to help Eve become a demon lord once again, she initially turns down his offer. However, Kiarga, Freya and Setsuna all scold her, reminding her of the terrible things she had done in the past and urging her to make amends. Kiarga tells Eve that he wants her to use her power to secure peace between humans and demons and to help him obtain the Philosopher's Stone, an artifact that he believes will be essential in achieving that goal. Eve is taken aback by Kiara's insistence, but she eventually realizes that he is right. She knows that she has a debt to pay for the damage she had caused as a demon lord and she wants to make things right. During a conversation about their combat abilities, Eve reveals a powerful summoning spell she knows, which can call forth the legendary bird known as the Caladrius. However, she admits that to make the bird obey her, she will have to undergo several trials and complete a challenging quest. Eve explains that Caladrius is a mystical creature that possesses the power to cure any disease or illness, but it is also notoriously difficult to control. To gain its loyalty, she must travel all around the world, facing various obstacles and challenges along the way. To avoid drawing attention to himself, Kiarga decides to disguise himself and scout the city of Branica in secret. However, as he wanders through the crowded streets, he is suddenly confronted by a bounty hunter who recognizes him by his distinctive scent. In a desperate bid to survive, Kiarga unleashes his power, which obliterates the hunter. After his harrowing encounter in the city of Branica, Kiarga returns to his companions, feeling relieved to be back with Freya and Setsuna. Despite the recent turmoil and violence, he is determined to enjoy his time with them and have some fun. Embarrassed, Eve leaves the room but excitedly listens and has fun with herself. So Kiarga notes it is only a matter of time before she gives in to his advances. Kiarga and Setsuna embark on a mission to track down the bounty hunters responsible for destroying the restaurant. They finally find the culprits and engage in a fierce battle with them and massacre them. In the end, having successfully avenged the destruction of the restaurant, However, they are not content with just defeating their enemies. In an act of revenge, they decide to leave the surviving bounty hunters trapped in a pit to be devoured by a beast. Freya purchases a magic staff and Kiarga decides to improve it with his magic skills. While he's in the store, he notices that the other staves for sale could also benefit from his magic touch. After improving them, the owner is so impressed that they offer Kiarga some money back and a mithril sword as a token of their gratitude. However, Kiarga's contentment is short-lived. His mood quickly turns sour when he learns that Norn, her army and Blade have arrived in Branica. He is filled with fury, knowing that Norn is one of the people responsible for his previous life's suffering. Kiarga quickly realizes that he is outmatched when he sees Norn and Blade accompanied by a powerful knight named Hawkeye. Despite his desire for revenge, he knows that he must retreat and come up with a new plan. As he backs away from the group, Kiarga carefully watches their every move. He knows that this new development could change everything and that he must remain cautious. With Norn and Blade now in Branica, Kiarga knows that he needs to be on high alert and prepared for anything. He understands that he may need to bide his time and wait for the right opportunity to get his revenge. That night, Blade abuses and tortures a girl. Kiarga decides to sell some of his potions to Carmen, the store owner, as they conduct the transaction. Carmen warns Kiarga about the fate of a girl who had crossed Norn and Blade. He explains that the girl had been subjected to terrible torture and eventually died from her injuries. After spending some time having fun with Freya and Setsuna, Kiarga decides to take a risky approach in his quest for revenge against Norn and Blade. He transforms himself into a woman and adopts the name Kira, using his new persona as bait to lure Norn and Blade into a trap. As Kira, Kiarga enters a pub where Blade is drinking. She uses her feminine charms to entice him and Blade offers her a drink. Kiarga knows that he must be careful not to reveal his true identity, so he accepts the drink and begins to chat with Blade during their conversation. Blade tries to kiss Kira and transfers a sleeping pill through the kiss. As Blade drinks more, Kira pretends to pass out from the pill. As Blade carries Kira to her hotel, they are unexpectedly attacked by the father of the girl whom Blade abused. Kira realizes that she must act quickly to protect both herself and Blade from the angry man's wrath. Using her magic skills, Kira knocks out the father and saves his life. However, this action alerts Blade to the fact that Kira is not who she seems. Despite Kira's victory in the fight against Blade, 
she had a powerful weapon at her disposal. Blade Sword Ragnarok enhances her strength and allows her to heal from injuries, making her a formidable opponent. During the fight, Kiarga is knocked out cold and later wakes up to find herself tied to Blade's bed. Blade prepares to abuse her but is horrified to discover that Kira is a male. Using her magic skills, Kiarga manages to break free from the ropes and grab a poison dagger. She uses it to stab Blade, who tries to grab her sword Ragnarok to heal herself. However, Kiarga stabs her again and Blade passes out. As Blade lies unconscious, Kiarga declares that it is finally time for revenge. She knows that she must be careful and strategic in her actions, as Norn and Blade's allies will likely be searching for her soon. Despite the danger and risks involved, Kiarga remains determined to continue her mission of revenge. Kira delves into Blade's memories and discovers a disturbing revelation. Norn is planning to launch an attack on Branica in just three days. Shocked by the gravity of the situation, Kira immediately starts thinking about what can be done to prevent the impending disaster. She wonders if there's anything she can do to warn the authorities and stop the attack before it's too late. After paralyzing Blade's legs, she has three brainwashed monsters who abuse her. The men then kill and eat her, causing Ragnarok to revert to a gem, following his transformation back into his true form. Kiarga has a chance encounter with Trist Organ, also known as Hawkeye. Trist is a skilled Jorl knight with incredible power and abilities. As they cross paths, Kiarga is immediately struck by Trist's impressive presence and physical strength. Trist Organ, also known as Hawkeye, is impressed by the potions that Kiarga sold to Carmen. He recognizes the quality of Kiara's work and sees the potential for him to be a valuable asset to his army. He invites Kiarga to join his forces and fight alongside him. But Kiarga declines the offer, knowing that he has plans to pursue. As Hawkeye speaks with Kiarga, Kiarga begins to sense his immense power and realizes that he may not be a match for him in a confrontation. Instead, Kiarga decides to focus on honing his abilities and finding a way to even the odds. Using the power of the gem, Kiarga connects with the gem to create a new weapon, a clawed gauntlet named Georgius. This new weapon can heal the user's injuries, giving Kiarga an advantage in battle. Kiarga celebrates by having fun with Freya and Setsuna while Eve helps herself into the room this time. On the third day of the search for Blade, Norn grows tired of the fruitless effort and becomes increasingly frustrated. She sees Blade as worthless and accuses the demons of Branica of brainwashing humans into accepting them. This belief fuels her anger and she issues a deadly command to her army. Norn orders her soldiers to kill everyone in Branica, regardless of whether they are demons or humans. The consequences of her orders are dire and the people of Branica are thrown into a state of panic and chaos. Tiarga is consumed with fury when he learns of Carmen's death. Overwhelmed by grief and rage, he unleashes his full power and begins to slaughter the soldiers in a brutal and merciless rampage. Norn and Hawkeye are stunned by Kira's ferocity and are powerless to stop him as he tears through their ranks. As the battle rages on, a new player enters the scene. Freya, disguised as Flair, appears on the battlefield and projects a giant hologram of herself in the sky. Her image towers over the battlefield, inspiring fear and confusion among the soldiers. With the battlefield descending into chaos, a new power dynamic is emerging. The arrival of Freya and the loss of Carmen have changed the balance of power in unpredictable ways and it's uncertain who will emerge victorious from this brutal conflict. Freya makes a bold move and declares that non-humans are not the enemy, urging the soldiers to stand down. Much to everyone's surprise, the soldiers obey her command without hesitation. Norn and Hawkeye look bewildered by this sudden turn of events, unsure of what to make of Freya's unexpected intervention. Before they can make sense of the situation, Kiarga suddenly bursts onto the scene and engages Hawkeye in battle. Although the two fighters are evenly matched, Kiarga manages to gain the upper hand and defeats Hawkeye in a fierce battle. With a final blow, Kiarga kills his opponent, leaving Norn stunned by the sudden turn of events. Before she can react, Kiarga swiftly knocks Norn unconscious and drags her to an underground cellar, imprisoning her there. In her underground cell, Norn is unaware that Kiarga is reading her memories, delving deep into her past and uncovering the truth behind her actions. He discovers that she was responsible for Leonard's attack on his village, which led to the destruction of his home and the deaths of his friends. When Norn awakens, Kiarga is waiting for her, his anger simmering beneath the surface. He confronts her about her role in the attack expressing his rage and grief over the loss of everything he held dear. Norn is taken aback by Kiara's sudden hostility, realizing that he now knows the truth about her past. He drugs Freya into acting like a dog, then promises if she can withstand Freya licking her without the sweet release until morning, 
He will release her. Norn fails the challenge, so he and Freya abuse her. Using his powers, Kiarga alters Norn's appearance and memories, giving her a new identity as Ellen. His little sister has always been in love with him, Norn, now Ellen, awakens with no recollection of her past life, feeling confused and disoriented by the sudden changes that have taken place. Kiraha arrives and Kiarga introduces Ellen. Kiarga has fun with Freya, Setsuna, Ellen, and Kiraha while Eve releases herself. Determined to move forward, Kiarga gathers his party and sets out on a new quest to help Eve tame Caladrius and complete their mission. Along the way, they encounter new challenges and obstacles, facing dangers and trials that test their resolve and strength. The death of Leonard, Blade, and Hawkeye, as well as the supposed murders of Flair and Norn. Having left Jorals in a state of chaos and disarray, amid this turmoil, Praum is driven by a sense of vengeful anger, assigns Bullet to stop Kiarga at all costs. As Bullet sets out on his mission, he is determined to avenge the deaths of his comrades and bring Kiarga to justice. With his formidable combat skills and relentless determination, he poses a serious threat to Kiarga and his party and Bullet is eager to abuse him again. As the conflict between Jorl and Bullet intensifies, Kiarga begins to realize that he has developed a deep sense of caring and attachment for the girls at his party. Despite this growing affection, however, he knows that his thirst for revenge and his desire to put an end to Jorl's tyranny must come first. So that is it for this video, guys, hope you enjoyed it. So, like this video for a cookie, and subscribe for lots of cookies.